The buzz around the Hollywood romantic comedy Coming to America 2 is nearing fever pitch as it is set to premiere in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. Our correspondent Abidami Dairo reports about the sequel to the movie that first recorded over 30 years ago. I want a woman that's going to arouse my intellect as well as my loins. Where will you find such a woman? In America. 30 years after Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall led African royalty from the fictitious country Zamunda into the heart of New York in the romantic comedy Coming to America, the duo are back with a sequel. <laughs> While the movie returns a good number of the old cast alongside Murphy and Hall, including James L. Jones as King Joffers and John Amos as Cleo McDowell, new cast step in the ring, including Jamin Fowler, Nomzamo Mbatha. I always thought that Mika was going to be queen. <laughs> While Fowler acknowledges that this is perhaps his biggest project yet, Mbatha, who is from South Africa, is impressed on the subtle take on patriarchy. It's the biggest project to me. It's the biggest project. It means everything to me. Everything about it is special. Every the original holds such a big space in my heart, you know. And uh, it, it meant so much to me that we did such a great job with the sequel. Um, and I think we did. So uh, I I I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of Namzamo. I'm proud of uh, everyone involved from the set designs to the costume design. Everyone just killed it. It meant so much to everybody, and we shared an equal appreciation for it. So I, I think that really resonated with everyone, and, and it really showed on screen. So this movie means just it's the biggest thing I've ever done, and I'm truly enjoying myself. Absolutely, I'm. I'm I was privileged to. Watch it yesterday, and I truly did enjoy it. And I feel um, really bringing back about 30 years of my life back. Um, Nomzamo, um, one of the things that stood back, um, stood out for me in the movie was um, the fact that sometimes it's um, extremely difficult being a woman. And um, you, being an African woman, um, you must understand that we still have some of these gender-based issues um, going on in our continent. And um, um, do you suppose that um, we are dealing with it um, well enough? I mean, I think there's so much work that we need to do uh, to be able to erase decades of patriarchal uh, oppression towards women. And I think it's important for us to use as many different mediums as we can. You know, if I'm not speaking at the United Nations, I'm going to use it to speak about it on my social media platforms. And then here we are in this film where so, one of the main central themes is female empowerment and to be able to make room for a new world. And the new world says that women have always been the backbone and we do have a pillar and it's, and, and it's important for us to also have social messaging in film or even in music, in any sort of medium that we can be able to do it, we must continue to have those conversations so that we can break barriers. I think right now we live in the 21st century. To be a woman is to be an abolitionist, you know, to abolish so many systemic things that have stood against us. So it's, it's, there's not enough that, that, that's being done, but I think we are definitely doing the worst. Children, this is your brother. Bella Murphy, Akili Love and Kiki Lane literally turn up the girl power mode in the movie. My family. For Bella, staring in the sequel of her father's 1988 classic felt empowering. I had to have been 10 or 11, and it was really empowering for me to see as a young black girl, because that was the first time I saw images of black royalty on screen. And it was even cooler because I was watching my dad do it. So um, it, it definitely just felt very empowered and, yeah. All right, and, and Akile, you were also very convincing, especially in that um, fight um, scene. Um, you really did kick some butts there. How did you prepare? It was very fun. Um, as weird as it sounds, hitting people with a big stick. I turned into this warrior. You know, my character is tiny but mighty. So she comes up to this big guy in one of these scenes and she's, you know, smiling and she looks super cute. Like, what is a tiny girl going to do? But she attacks really hard with this big stick and she cracks a vase over his head and swings glasses at him. It was so much fun training for this. And I actually got to fight with people off scene, the stunt coordinators, and it was so much fun. I got to practice all these flips and everything and you know she always does this battle cry which was one of my favorite things to do it took a lot out of me to scream that loud but it was so much fun and general izzy would love nothing more than to take over zamunda during my conversation with wesley snipes who played the witless and self-serving general izzy he quickly reminded me of his versatility as an actor even before i could ask him about how his visit to nigeria back in 2005 helped in developing his character and to wrap up this feature from Coming to America, I'm now being joined by Hollywood action film hero and sometimes villain Wesley Snipes. He played General Easy 
in this movie. And he's also an Ikemba, a, a title chief in um, Anambra, um, Southwest Nigeria. How are you, Wesley? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. You talked about me. You said that I'm only I'm 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 an action star and then a protagonist, but you didn't say I was a lover man. Yes, 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 yes. We've seen you. Um, so we have to remember that um, the movies in the beginning was I was the lover man. Absolutely. You must forgive me for 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 missing that out. Yes, but, that's right. <laughs> yeah, talk, but talking about um coming to America too, that particular character, General Easy, is such a very, very peculiar character when you look at the mannerism and all of that. Um, could you give us the backstory about developing that character? Yeah, you know, just being a Kimba and hanging out with a lot of Rasta, you know, I have a lot of choices, friends of mine who have embodied characteristics that you can see in this particular character. And you know, the accent, the dialect. And I brought a little bit of Nigeria, I brought a little bit of South Africa, I brought a little bit of South Korea, because he's an international man, you know? He's an international man. He has, he has studied a lot of places in Europe, and then, 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 yeah. So he's an international man. So my first visit to Nigeria was when I was doing a Broadway play that was written by the great poet, writer, laureate, Wally Shoinka. And I had the blessings of going to Ibadan to study there and to hang with the, 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 the wonderful uh, young actors and see their play there. So, so ever since then, I picked up little things. And I thought, you know, it's so great, great to be able to do a British accent or it's great to be doing a, 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 a Scottish accent and the difference between Scottish and Irish. But as an African man, I have to be able to do the accents that come from my mother. And they come from the land of our ancestors. So that's what I do. Hello, I am Hakim Jaffer, King of Zamunda. Coming to America 2 also stars Nigerian-American actor Rotimi, American rapper Rick Cross, and a cameo appearance from Nigerian pop star David O. That is a fictional place. Not everybody. Zamunda is a very...